Well, I'm Zansi. I'm Nick Rubinovitz. I'm Ezra Lowe. Welcome back to Tires and Briars, or as we're calling it today, Riders and Briars. That's because today's car is not actually a car, Nick. It's a motorcycle. We are swapping four wheels for two as we ride a pair of road hogs. Then we swap the hogs for horses as we go for an equine amble along the beach. Awesome. What's an equine amble? A horse ride. Why don't you just say so? To finish things off, we go for a scenic seafood ride with the ladies of Sinsa. It's Sinsa. Sinsa? Yes, it's a wild coast. Are we on the wild coast? Yes! Oh. Here's those, uh, those horses. Are they part of the tyre segment or the briar segment? Tyre segment. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> How's it? My name's Kevin Hill, from East London, locally known as Slummies. How's it? I'm Freddy Pretoria, also from East London. We are bikers and we love it. Started riding bikes at the age of seven, started on motocross bikes, um, exceeded, went on to water sports, jet ski racing, but then I tasted the, the ride of the Harley Davidson and uh, can, can, can't look back. Viking's a passion. It's an old 2006 fat boy. It's fast, it's reliable. It's the old carburetor model. I prefer it to the fuel injection. It's quite an old bike, but it's well looked after. It's got basically everything you can put on it. There's nothing more you can add on. There's nothing better than that thunder of this bike. I was born in Vereniging, raised there till I was 16 years old. Got into biking at a young stage. I also did some motocrossing, and then I got into the street bikes. Nowadays, like, as you can see, it's the big ones. This is a 96 Fat Boy Harley, and it's a thrill to ride these bikes. It's a passion, you've got it in your heart. If you get to ride on these things, you'll feel it in your legs. This is like a feeling you'll never had before in your life. It's an interesting place, this, eh? Look at that. Helmets up in the trees. Hey! And guys on bikes. <laughs> Hello! How's it, guys? How's it, guys? Yeah, How's it, Nick? Nick? How's Nick? How's it, Kevin? Hello, How's Frank? It, Kevin? How's How's it, Nick? Nick? Because Nick. So, How's it? So my main concern is that the helmets are up in the trees and we're riding on the bikes. Yeah. Is Can that we get one out? No, we, we've made a plan, eh? Okay. we got plenty around. <laughs> That's fantastic. We've made a plan for you guys today. Uh, you ride a motorbike because rugby, cricket and tennis only require one ball. So how many balls do you need for? <laughs> New balls, please. <laughs> um, guys, your bikes look amazing. Can't wait to get on them. But before we do, we want to check out the Museum of Motorbike Hoarding. Is this it? You're, you've arrived at the right place. Fantastic. There's lots to see. I hope you a lot of patience and time and some big eyes with some good stuff. We don't have a lot of time. Okay. Show us the highlights. Okay, follow me. Okay. I think it's actually just a museum about things that have engines and wheels attached to them. Two wheels, primarily. So there's all these different walls of all these different bikes. He's got from the smallest motorcycle to the largest motorcycle ever made. Can I introduce you to Billy? The owner is the collector of this place. Yes. Billy, oh. meet these two gents. Thank you. Hello, Billy. Welcome. Thank you. Glad you could make time to come see. Hi, Billy. This is awesome, Billy. It's a lot of two-wheeled vehicles. How many there. bikes do you have? Um, I've got 650 on display, and I've probably got another 50 that I'm working on. The collection is ridiculous. His and Ron and I did some quick numbers because he used to be an accountant. We worked it out at least 40 million rands worth of bikes. He was just offered $80,000 for a bike. How many of the bikes were? Yeah, the terminology is run. Run, yes. Yeah. When we park a bike on show, we take the fuel out, we take the batteries out, because that's a fire hazard. If I take it to the workshop, put a battery, put fuel, I can get 85% of them running. You know, that word amazing I use so often, and I think I use it so lightly, but this place is amazing. It is awesome. Hundreds, if not thousands of motorcycles, in different state of disrepair, in repair, for repair, all stored in these stores or galleries. This has been collecting bikes for 40 plus years on a small scale. He then upscaled it and he's brought bike collecting to a whole new level. What makes my heart happy is to see a lot of bikers. My background is a biking background. My father was a biker. My mom used to ride on the pillion. 
I had uh, five brothers plus myself. We were all bikers. Who are your top three special, the loves of your life in this collection? Yes, the love of my life, my son. <laughs> That's, That's me. Beautiful. That's a very good answer. That is we, we have a, a, a unique relationship. We phone each other five, six times a day. I know it's asking you to choose between your children, but do you have a favorite bike? Yeah, there's a, 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 a Triumph 900 triple. It's a three cylinder. And it's got grunt, it's got bottom end, it's got top end, it's got everything. There's a plane, an aeroplane that he bought from the Siskai government because they bought it from, I think it was Bono or the guy that organized Live Aid. Basically, he flew everybody out on a plane. Barbara Streisand, Elvis Presley, The Who, The Rolling Stones. And then when they got to the Siskai, they realized it wasn't actually an independent country. So they did a walking safari back to Joburg and left the plane. That's how he got it. Only three of these planes in the world. I mean, call it a museum, call it hoarding, call it what you will. I just think if you are going to hoard stuff, you know, it helps that it's valuable. I'm married into a family that are from a long line of hoarders. But unfortunately, all my wife hoards is Tupperware. It's not even good Tupperware. It's lidless Tupperware. I cannot find a lid for any piece of Tupperware. Rather hoard a bike, like a valuable one. In 2006, they did a survey, they found that the mean age, the average age for Harley riders is 46.7. That's how old the people riding them are, 46. So I, I don't know, I think they're gonna have to rename the fat boy the old boy, if you ask me. What a magnificent bunch of guys, you know, the tan, the hair, you know, the helmet wearing. These guys look like they, they ride off. Hogs all the time. Fred is a lovely guy, loves being by the Wild Coast. Picked up a hand grenade when he was 12, blew off a couple of his fingers, and his friends call him Stompy, which I felt was a bit insensitive. But he's the kind of guy who, at heart, is about business on top and party at the back. Loves the open road, loves a breakfast run and a cold beer at 5 o'clock in the morning. That's the kind of road hog he is. I can't have a beer at 5 o'clock in the morning. My wife will kill me. She'll be like, you go change the baby, put that beer down. You know what they say, it's the wind in your hair, the sun on your skin, and the motorbike between your legs. But the truth is, for me, it was more like the wind in my face, the bugs in my teeth, the exhaust burning my leg, and between my legs was another man. But to be honest with you, it was absolutely worth it. Yeah, we came down into, into Morgan Bay, and everybody gets excited. Everybody puts down their tools, stops what they're doing. It's special being on the back of those things, at least for a day, or just when you want to feel that. I love the Wild Coast. I spent, um, as a student, I spent four days hiking from Port St. John's to Coffee Bay. It's just spectacular scenery. The beaches are beautiful. Morgan Bay, what a beautiful location. You know, I gotta treat the boys to an amazing fat course today. I made for them the beast. So I took some shredded chicken, put in a bowl, put in some, a lot of parsley to get that herbiness through, the greenness through. Then I added some mayo, some lemon juice, some salt, some pepper, some grated fresh turmeric and I put that in, and some chili powder, and I mixed it all together, you know, to get a nice little base for the sandwich. Then I took a lovely big size baguette bun, cut it down the middle, laid some lettuce on it, laid a layer of tomato, laid a layer of cabbage, then I put in my chicken mixture that we had just made, then I put some cucumber on the top of it, 
then some chicken skin and then some julienne carrots, some chili, sprinkle the bit of parsley, chopped up some coriander and sprinkle that up as well and boom, it's the beast. Now guys, once you have the ingredients prepped, you can make the beast. You know, it's an easy peasy lemon squeezy sandwich to make. It's assembly, easy, you got this. Easy, you can make it anywhere, anytime. Hungry? Yes. All right, now, always come, hungry. Come How's it, boys? Hello. Wow, look at that, eh? It's lunch time. Yeah. Let's grab one. Man, that looks awesome. Yeah. How does one get this in, in the mouth? What can you do is, can I take a small one? Go for the small one. Thank you, buddy. Nick, you've left some of your chicken behind you. But... Okay. Man. So this is what it's all about, eh? Oh, eating with the guys was amazing. Kevin was like, oh, he was going crazy on the sandwich. And Nick enjoyed the sandwich. Fred was a bit reserved, you know. He's a very calm guy, you know, for someone who drives a Harley, he's very calm. A little bit of chili in this is nice, eh? Mm. I like, I like your chilies, it. eh? Mm. Nice and fresh, yeah. hot. The view, the food, the company made this meal what it was, amazeball. So, I believe um, Harley and Davidson mm -hmm. were childhood friends. And um, William Harvey, Arthur Davidson, and they actually made their first bike that their friend Henry Melk's house. But Melk is not a very cool name to have on the badge. Harley no. Davidson Melk sounds like a diesel milkshake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. With a, with a hell of a noise. <laughs> but they were pedal bikes. The first one was a pedal bike. Okay. Mm. That's a pedal bike. You saw some in... Um, help me trap. In the museum. I help the little trap. motor. Help yeah. me trap. No, you pedal it and it swings the engine. But they oh. couldn't get up the hills of it. Milwaukee. Cool. This is where the first motor pedal gang started. The out-of-breath outlaws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. The pedal pushers. That was actually a famous one. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. It was excellent. Uh, arriving at the beach, I saw some horses there. And I said to Nick, are we riding the horses? And Nick was like, yeah, we're riding the horses. And I was like, no, we're not riding the horses. But Nick's yeah, like, yes, you're riding the horses. The barman says, we've got a whiskey that looks Hi. Hi, my lady. I'm Ezron. Hi, I'm Sasha. Hi. Friend Nick. Sasha. Nice to meet you. Hi, Sasha. Do we need to swap these helmets for Yes, please. Helmets? We've oh, got yes. some helmets go. for you guys. Right. I thought all helmets um, were equal. No, no, no. These are especially made for horse riding. Um, this one is... You is can this have one this one. Me? I think your head is a bit bigger. Than his. <laughs> <laughs> this one is for the horsey day. You can have that one. Do you want me to hold, to hold if, it? If you could... I'll hold. Thank you. Fine. Thank you. All right. Yeah? Let's ride. Okay. Let's ride. Okay, cool. And I was just so nervous. I've never ridden a horse in my life. And you know, horses can pick up on whether or not you're nervous or if you're confident and stuff. So I went over to the horse and I tried to pretend that I wasn't nervous. So I was rubbing it and kissing the horse. And the horse was just showing its face away from me like, yeah, bro, I know you nervous. So I had to sort of get confidence. And the way you show confidence is by getting on the horse properly. It's called saddling. And you swing your whole body over. I did it in the first go, and now the horse knew I was in charge, man. I was in charge, so I thought. And then, <laughs> it was time to ride. <laughs> I can just imagine what I look like riding a horse. This guy there with his belly out, going, going, going. Woo, and the horse has got you, and, and it's like this. <laughs> and all I can say is, hey, nah. His run on the horse, I thought he looked the part. I thought he looked like a chicken salesman on the back of a horse. That's what he looked like. I grew up on a horse farm, but I was quite intimidated by them as a kid. But today, I fell in love with horses. It was a beautiful experience. That was one of the most amazing experiences of my life, riding a horse on the beach. Best experience ever. Guys, ride a horse if you can on the beach. Because that's the only time it's actually worth it to go through that is to ride the horse on the beach.
phone up my wife, I was like, we need to get the baby on a bike. We need to get the whole family on a bike. We need to get sidecars, all of that stuff. And she said, uh, well, we can get that, but then you'd also need to get a divorce. The guys dropped us off here at Linza. Beautiful, forested little enclave, little village in the trees by the beach. Majestic, beautiful long beach. Bit of a lagoon. Cossa sea cows roaming the, the beach. You see a queer funny. Build a kiss. Thank you, Freddy! It's loud and the whole town just stops to check these hogs driving. Burr, burr. Oh my god, there was a lot of estrogen that we walked into. I don't know if I've ever been to a braai, entirely women only braai. And it was exciting. We used to like men going, oh, no, come on, I'll show you my recipe. And, and, uh, and, and it's a different energy, it's a totally different energy. And just arriving here, wow. What a reception from the ladies. Like, whoa, 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 screaming, shouting, hugs. I think they thought we were strippers. I really think they thought we were strippers. Most beautiful. Of you. I've got one question How many ladies can we fit into the jacuzzi with us? Where's the bike? Can we go back? Right, let's go back. You know, I can't believe how beautiful this place is. Just the view, the beach. You can just see everything from the location we're at tonight. Lizelle, our host and chef and former chairwoman of the East London Business Network, dynamic person. All these people, I've just felt like such a great atmosphere of cohesion and community and unity and diversity. Oh, Lizelle, what a hostess. She had prepared a fantastic menu for us. It was a seafood boil. Lizelle, mind-blowing. Oh, Everything mind-blowing. <laughs> the hundreds of women, mind-blowing. <laughs> the view, mind-blowing. The menu looks mind-blowing. Nick, is your mind blown? Yeah, the menu looks... Not, Not kosher. kosher. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from that, what is that? Which hey. one? The hag. Yes, it's I love it. the hag. Tell us a bit about your menu, Lizelle. What do you have here? Well, as you said, it's the seafood boil. Yeah. So what I've put in the pot already that's busy boiling is your the corn and the potato and sweet potato as well, baby potatoes. Mm. And once that is cooked, we're going to put in some crab. This is crab, Mozambican crab. Karangej. Got some Karangage. mussels. Yeah. Half shell mussels. Then we've got some prawns and calamari. And then, <clears throat> as traditional with a seafood boil, you have to put some sausage in as well. Lizelle, what is, what is this though? Rooster that cook. dough is for rooster cook. We're going to do that on the fire next door. Traditionally, Hez makes cocktails for the ladies. Okay. Since everyone here is a lady, Hez, I'm making a lot of cocktails. I'm, 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 I'm going to be the most popular guy here tonight, Nick. A seafood boil is when you take a whole bunch of seafood, mainly crab, prawn, fish, stuff like that, and you boil it together. It's, it's a quick, easy meal. Today I made a party cocktail. First, I took a bottle of vodka. I put some pink sweets in there, shake it up, shake it up, shake it up. So the vodka became pink. I rimmed the glass with some lemon, and then I dipped it in some blue sugar, so you had a blue sugar rim over the top. Then I put in some sweets at the bottom. Then I added some vodka, some ice, and some cranberry juice and more sweets. And just for these ladies, because these ladies are so amazing. I added some flowers and boom, vodka and cranberry juice, party style, bro. No, his one normally drops off the cocktail and there's, I always feel like comfortable because he, he delivers the cocktail to the women at the bride. Because, hey ladies, and now uh, literally all the women here are ladies. Nick, I've, I've prepared this what? special cocktail. On earth, this is this is <laughs> this is my party love. 
This is my party love. Well, are you suggesting? Because I see a lot of like sweets at the bottom. Yes, 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 yes. And a lot of Say, these people here are moms. Here you go. For you, my lady. So if you got any leftovers, I normally sweets, hand I think them each one to the lady. When life gives you sweets, make a cocktail. Yeah, do you want, this one do you want, no It's going to go very well with your dress, I think. Cheers to the East Coast. To the East Coast. To the East Coast. The Wild Coast. The Wild Coast. Wild Lady. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. There were enough cocktails. And they loved it and they loved him. Isn't it time that we had praise singers for women? In the past times, I used to say to Helen Zilla, I met her once. I said, Helen, when you walk in, they must be there. Yalana stops. Yalana Savena Simaki Anna's Flowers, Julia Fale. When Patricia walks in, Patty is a pilot, Patty is a bush. Patty's got for you. You know, I got as much pleasure out of this bride as I did being on the back seat of that Harley. Dinner is served, ladies and gentlemen. I present you with a seafood boil. <laughs> Firstly, a very big thank you to Sharon, our host, for this beautiful venue. It's called Sinsa Elwa and Jane. On the beach. Sinsa on the beach. <laughs> Magnificent. Sinsa on the beach fast. Sinsa on the beach. Sinsa on the beach. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your you generosity. Lazelle, you. thank you for putting all of this together, being our host, putting this magnificent uh, feast. Uh, feast. Feast. Together. Fast. Seafood feast together. Unbelievable. Thank Amazing. you so much. Thank you so much. Only a and, and thank you to all these beautiful women here today. You are representative of what? South African women. Yes. Be. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. And beautiful. <laughs> you are. You are. You are the source of life. You are the yeah. source of our lives. The lives of these young men over here. They are many. We honor you. We thank you for being awesome. And we say, we say, as they say in the classics. Utintum faz, utintum faz, utintum faz. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, Thank you. Can, so let's dig in, let's enjoy. Yes, can you? Yes. 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 Oh, eating with the ladies, what an exceptional feeling. Just, you know, I felt safe. I didn't feel like I need to show off my ego and be manly. No. It felt like home, because a woman makes a home. It felt so good to be here. Wow. Um, what a great excursion into the Eastern Cape. Beautiful people, beautiful scenery. Wild coast, Makoseni, birthplace of many prominent South Africans. So it holds a lot of significance, place. And I feel like the people embody that spirit of togetherness. Expressing that, sharing that around the bra, how much better could it get? What kind of job is this? This is amazing. This is bringing people together. This is making me fat. Nick! Ladies! Is anybody still here? Oh, well, at least I still have the jacuzzi. Miss 